There is reality as we know it the reality most of us operate on, where we can imagine a situation where we too might be capable of making a shot or pass like this. But then, there are those who simply do not appear to be on the same playing field as the rest of us. Okay, Steph Curry probably can't freeze time, and he probably doesn't see cool green computer codes everywhere that he looks. Well, he might. However, one thing we can be absolutely sure of is that Steph Curry does in fact have an elite level court awareness, and that is not a conspiracy. So the question becomes, what is court awareness and can it be taught? Well, what is court awareness? Court awareness is simply understanding what's happening around you on the court at any given moment, without allocating your attention to any one thing specifically. In this clip, we see Steph gets a pretty straightforward rebound, but right away two things happen. James Harden recognizes no one is guarding him, and he has the lane. Steph Curry also recognizes this, but he lets the play develop and is a little more subtle about it. So Curry drives out towards the top of the key, likely anticipating Pau Gasol will follow him, or at least anticipate the play is going to take place in this area. All the while, the original scenario is still playing out. Then finally, the alley-oop to a wide open James Harden and an unsuspecting Pau Gasol. All. But this is an all-star game, and of course not everyone is exactly on their A game. But it's a good example nonetheless. Here, we see Curry coming down mid-court. Bear in mind it's a 4-on-1, and there's no safe bet for the defender here. He has Clay for the 3, a layup from both Iguodala and Curry to worry about, and JaVale McGee coming down the lane. Really, scoring here is pretty inevitable no matter how you look at it. But in all of these potential situations, the defender contesting a wide open shot was going to be at least possible. The pass to Clay, and there's at least time to get a hand up. Iguodala or Curry for the layup could also be easily contested. And as JaVale comes down the lane, the defender knows help is on the way, and this can also be contested. And well, here's where the magic happens. Curry recognizes the dynamic at hand. He draws his defender out as if he himself is going to take the shot or make a quick pass to Clay. But before waiting long, the behind the back pass with his offhand to Iguodala for the two easy points. And nothing is especially interesting about this play. But if you pause it at this moment right here and weigh all the possible outcomes, a contested Clay Thompson three, maybe 30 to 40%. Curry taking the shot, around the same. JaVale coming down the lane, or Iguodala, they weren't exactly high in this moment because there could have been help D. But it was Curry deciding to delay the pass by that half second, drawing out his defender, that at least doubles the likelihood of Iguodala getting the two points here. It's in that half second that we can see the true importance of court awareness. And you might be thinking, you're telling me all of this is going through Curry's head during that drive? To which I would answer, no, of course not. This all happens automatically and effortlessly. And actually, I would guess most of you basketball players watching this video, hopefully, know exactly what I'm talking about. This is called court awareness. I'm sure Steph couldn't go into all the details of all the micro adjustments that were made in a matter of seconds, but they were there and they did happen. And if you take a look at the same play again, you might notice it was not just Curry. Each player on the court has their own interpretation of the likely scenarios and things that are imminent to play out and they prepare for them accordingly. They are all operating on the same frequency called court awareness to one degree or another, which shouldn't surprise us really. It's why they're in the NBA. And as humans, we all have the skill of situational awareness. And in basketball, this skill translates to what we call court awareness. And from an evolutionary standpoint, it makes sense to have situational awareness. 10,000 years ago, as hunter-gatherer humans, if there was a saber-toothed tiger stalking you, it would have been a highly beneficial trait to recognize you're being followed without directly seeing the saber-toothed tiger. And of course the stakes are clearly not as high in the NBA, well, for the most part. But the idea remains the same. Situational awareness and court awareness are very important things. And this all brings us to the question, is court awareness something that can be taught? Now we all know what it looks like when someone lacks court awareness, getting caught up in a one-on-one, -on -one, dribbling and dribbling while failing to recognize there's been someone under the basket for the last 20 seconds who was wide open. Yeah, don't be that person. <laughs> 
Or on defense, it might be something as simple as letting the person you're guarding sneak behind you for the easy two points. These are things we could all relate to from time to time, but the key is to recognize them and do them less. But how? And the first step is to recognize them. On offense, are you someone who puts your head down and dribbles in circles? Or are you someone who keeps their head up and is constantly scanning the court looking for easy scoring opportunities? On defense, are you someone who can guard their defender and play help defense when you need to? Or are you always losing track of the person you're guarding and letting easy layups happen right behind you? If you recognize you lack court awareness at times, this in and of itself is a huge first step to improving it. The second thing you could do is actively bring your attention to the court and the game. Be present. For obvious reasons, a basketball game isn't the best time to think about the last game you played, your homework, or what you're gonna eat later. When you're in a game, the best thing you could do is be in that game and immerse yourself fully. If you miss an easy shot, move on. If you turn the ball over, move on, forget about it, and keep bringing yourself back into the game. Curry's approach to this is what he called short-term amnesia, and it's what you could also call mindfulness, but we'll save that for another video. The second thing you could do to improve court awareness is pattern recognition. Basketball scenarios tend to repeat themselves over time. Fast breaks, pick and rolls, off-ball screens, these are things that happen in every game, and the more you familiarize yourself with the outcomes of these situations, the more you're gonna be prepared. The best way to do this is really just by playing basketball, watching basketball, and really just trying to understand how the game is most effectively played. The more games you play while remaining present, for example, pickup games, the more scenarios you will see play out, and with time, you're slowly gonna learn to see these scenarios before they unfold and develop finely tuned strategies for how to deal with them. For example, if the same guy is coming down the court, using the same left to right, between the legs crossover, and driving to the basket, for for obvious reasons, it's important to recognize this and adjust your defense accordingly. Number three, confidence. Now, this one deserves its own video as well, but the better your court awareness becomes, the more confident you will be to find those plays and opportunities that no one else can see. And what is confidence? Confidence, as it pertains to basketball, is simply trust in your preparation. It's not some abstract concept. Basketball can be a very difficult and unpredictable sport. There's a lot out of your control, but the one thing we can control is how hard we practice. If we practice intelligently, we will have trust in our preparation and be able to go into the game with a clear mind ready for anything. That's true confidence. Number four, you have to recognize that this is not always pretty. Court awareness isn't flashy. Sometimes it's an off-ball screen that leads to your teammate getting open and making a three-pointer. And truth be told, most people aren't going to notice you had anything to do with that play. But it's these types of things that coaches and scouts do notice. They want to put together a winning team, and a windmill dunk is worth as many points as a backdoor layup. And if you're not out there throwing down windmill dunks, this video should be a pretty important wake-up call for you. Anyways guys, this was a pretty long video, and if you're still watching this, you're probably the type of athlete that can relate to these concepts. You want to get better at basketball, and you probably know that there is a lot more to it than adding some inches to your vertical leap or pounds to your bench press. And the good news is, you'd be 100% right, there's a lot more to it. The first link in the description below is our Phenom Builder Basketball Movements Program. We've been developing it for nearly a decade now, and it's what we've used to take average high school athletes to the D3, D2, D1 and even professional level. So I highly recommend you check that out as well. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. It's your favorite coach's favorite editor, Andre, and see you on the next one.